Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Nothing? Great. Subscribe to TYT Sports. Huge news in Wrigleyville. Theo Epstein has come to the Cubs as their GM. We bring in David Schuster of 670. The score has been covering the team for as long as I've been alive. David, how are you today? <laughs> Well, I, I guess I'm feeling old after that introduction. But no, oh, come I'm fine. on, Chu. I'm, I'm fine, Ricky. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. What was your initial reaction to Theo Epstein being announced as the new Cubs GM? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, officially he's not, he has not been announced. Um, you know, the Cubs have not made any official announcement, although it is fait accompli. I mean, they, they're just working out some details as compensation with the Red Sox, and, and then the Cubs will unveil him, whether it's on Friday, Monday, or Tuesday. I'm not really sure what day that'll be. But, you know, it's no real surprise. I mean, this is the guy that Tom Ricketts set his sights on. And, you know, I'll give him credit. You know, he, he set his sights high. And like the Canadian Mountie, he, he got his man. So, you know, I think there's a lot of circumstances that played into this. The fact that the Red Sox went into the toilet the last month of the season, and the fact that the Red Sox, honestly, have not been good as far as getting into the playoffs the last couple of years. I think that played into the Cubs' favor. And the fact that the Red Sox actually have a replacement uh, in, in uh, uh, Epstein's assistant to take over. So I think all certain circumstances just played into place here for Tom Ricketts, and uh, he set his sights on this guy, and he got him. You know, there are a lot of points to cover with Theo Epstein coming to the Cubs. I honestly was very proud to hear of the news, although it has not officially been announced. I have to ask you, one of the names thrown around, and this was a no-brainer that they would obviously not do it, but that Starlin Castro would have to go to the Red Sox. Um, is there a, another name that we've heard for this deal? Well, it's going to be minor league prospects and cash. I mean, it's going to be nobody off the major league roster. Um, you know, again, I'm sure they're dickering behind the scenes over that literally as we speak right now, but all indications are nobody off the Major League roster, not Matt Garza, not Andrew Kashner, not anybody else who's on the Major League roster. You know, the Cubs have some decent prospects, either at double or single A level, and, you know, they're going to pay the price for getting this guy. That's just the way it works. I mean, the White Sox just did the same thing with Florida, you know, with Ozzy Guillen going down there. They got a couple of prospects for him. Seems like nowadays, at least lately, here in Chicago specifically, there have been executives or managers that have been traded to other teams for, for prospects down the road. That's just part of the game, and uh, that's what's going to happen here eventually. Now, Theo's going to come in. He's going to take over the team. What is going to be the first order of business for him? Well, his first order of business will be hiring a manager. I mean, there's no way Mike Quaddy is going to be the manager of the Cubs going forward. I mean, he said he thought he was going to be, retain the job when the season's over, but, you know, everybody knows that's not the case. So, you know, they'll very quietly let him go or find something else for him, probably let him go. And then uh, he's going to have to find his manager. And I'm sure that was part of the discussions with uh, Tom Ricketts over the weekend. You know, who are you considering to be your manager when you come here? It's not going to be Jerry Francona for a litany of reasons. Um, so it's going to probably be somebody else that, Obviously, Theo Epstein is comfortable with. That'll be his first order of business. After that, it doesn't really make a difference if you're Theo Epstein or if it's Jim Hendry. What you really have to do is get out from under of some of these horrendous contracts. You're going to trade Carlos Zambrano. Uh, apparently, Ozzie Guillen does want him to go down to Florida. So, you know, it looks like you've got a willing trading partner, but you're going to have to eat a lot of that contract. Aramis Ramirez is a free agent, uh, so to speak. You know, I'm sure they're going to find a way of getting rid of him. There's no way they're going to eat all the money for Alfonso Soriano, so that's not going to happen. Um, but those are the first things, orders of business, a new manager, and trying to get out from under some of these rotten contracts. By the way, have you heard any names, speculation-wise, that they may hire or consider? Uh, as far as the manager? Yep. You know, there was a rumor going around that, uh, you know, it might be underlying, might be Ryan Sandberg. You know, obviously he finished second to Mike Quaddy last year because Jim Hendry really wasn't, you know, enamored with him. And then Tom Ricketts has been. So, you know, his name's been bantered around. And ironically, um, uh, Epstein tried to hire Ryan Sandberg to be his AAA manager at Pawtucket this past season before Sandberg decided to take the AAA job 
in uh, in the Phillies organization. So there might be some synergy there, but I don't think that's the direction that Theo Epstein's going to go unless Tom Ricketts tries to talk him into that. Um, other than that, no. I mean, first things first, let the man get hired, and then I'm sure all the rumors will follow right after that. And how long do you give this Cubs team until they could probably make the playoffs? Would you give them two years, three years? What, what, would, your, what would be your expectations? Well, to be honest with you, nowadays in baseball, it's really strange. I mean, teams, you know, go from high to low and low from high rather quickly. I mean, the White Sox, I mean, everybody thought that they'd be a playoff team this year, and they just stunk. But conversely, if they, you know, stay healthy next year and, and Adam Dunn or Alex Rios, you know, have, <laughs> have their normal seasons as, a, as opposed to the horrendous seasons they have, all of a sudden they could be a playoff team. That's just the way it works nowadays in baseball. What, what really has to happen for the Cubs to be a perennial winner is for the farm system to keep getting better, stack it up, be able to either use those players in trades down the road or call them up as being everyday players. That's something that really hasn't happened. Starling Castro very quickly moved up the chain in the Cubs organization. But other than that, they really haven't had anybody come up for years. So that's the first order of business. Now, I will tell you, Tom Ricketts has retained both Amiri Flita, who is his farm director, and Tim Wilkin, his scouting director. Those are good people, and supposedly Theo Epstein has given his uh, seal of approval on both those guys. In order for any organization, much less the Cubs, to be a perennial winner or a playoff team, they have to have a good farm system, and that's what the Cubs are trying to do. I completely agree with you. Um, last question for you, off-season question. Albert Pujols or Prince Fielder, do you foresee either of them coming to Chicago? No, too much money. Like I said, they got some rotten contracts right now on their books. And though you know the Cubs are a big, um, big league market club, I just don't see them forking out the money, and neither would I. Uh, you know, if you're going to do that, on top of all the other rotten contracts, you're putting yourself further behind the eight ball, and you're only improving yourself potentially in one position. They really need pitching. That's where it all starts. If I'm going to spend my money, I'm going to look at maybe a C.J. Wilson, maybe a Mark Burley even, switching over from one side of town to the other. I'm looking for pitching. I'm not worried about a guy who's going to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And by the way, I wouldn't give the money to, for sure, I wouldn't give it a fielder because, you know what, he's one injury away from just being a designated hitter, and I don't like the weight on him on top of it. And Albert Pujols, you know, he already could be close to 40 years old. So in spite of them both having good years, I'm not signing either one to a seven, eight, or nine-year contract. No chance. So you think that they could get a C.J. Wilson in the offseason? Well, I think if they're going to put uh, invest any kind of money into any kind of free agents, I think it's going to be in the pitching um, area. And Matt Garza did a really good job for them last year in spite of not winning a lot of games. He pitched well. That's what it's all, that's what it's all about. You need pitching. Take a look at what Milwaukee did this year, not only in their starting rotation, but their bullpen. If you improve your bullpen and you have at least, at least three dependable starters, then I think you've got a pretty good chance of being a contender. And the Cubs right now, they don't have at least three guys in their rotation. So if, if for my money, and I think that's what's going to happen here, I think they're going to look to add pitching. David Schuster of CBS Radio and 670 The Score. Very quickly, David, where can the people find you? On Twitter, on Facebook, what have you? Oh, Facebook for sure under my name and Twitter. Um, <laughs> it's my uh, email name. It's Shoemouse, S-C-H-U-M-O-U-S-E. Maybe yeah. we should leave that last part out so you don't get random people emailing nah, you. I don't care. It doesn't make a difference. I've been, I've been teased forever. No big deal. <laughs> All right, David. Thank you very much for the time again. We really appreciate it. You got it. No problem. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, and Rookie Mankiewicz has an important message for you. Subscribe to TYT Sports. Nice job, pal.